Now we're going to revisit the conservation of energy. We've covered particles translating in the past, and now we're going to cover rigid bodies. So we need to take into account not only things translating, but also rigid bodies rotating. So let's get started with that. So I have this link here, and if this thing is not rotating, and we want to know the kinetic energy of it, let's say it's moving with a velocity, velocity at the center of gravity right here. So to figure out the kinetic energy, which we've called T, it is just one half m v the velocity at the center of gravity squared. Okay, now let's take into account if this thing's also rotating. So not only is it moving about its center of gravity here, but it is also rotating with some angular velocity omega. If we have this rotation, we have to add that kinetic energy term in. And that is one half I omega squared where I is the mo mass moment of inertia about its center of gravity. And for a long slender beam, we know that value is 1 12th ML squared. So we can put that in there, and then that would be the kinetic energy of this system. Now, let's try a different scenario. What if this was rotating about a fixed point and we had omega about this point O. So this is rotating about O with a angular velocity of omega. Well let's go back to our conservation or our kinetic energy term where we have one half m velocity at g squared plus are one half i omega squared term. And that's the mass moment of inertia at the center of gravity. Well, here it's kind of difficult to figure out both the velocity at the center of gravity and the angular velocity about the center of gravity somewhere in the middle here with g. So how do we do this? Well, we can transform this equation to just be one half times the mass moment of inertia about O times omega squared. So if you remember how to transform this, if we want the mass moment of inertia about O, we can use the parallel axis theorem, which we take the mass moment of inertia about the center of gravity and add the mass times the distance squared, where this would be the d term here. And that would transform this mass moment of inertia to the mass moment of inertia about point O, and then we could just use this formula, which makes our calculations much simpler. Now we'll go through one last scenario. So let's say we know the velocity at each of these ends. So we have A here and B over here. And the velocity at A, let's say the velocity of A is pointed this direction and the velocity of B is something like this. So we know the velocity at each of the ends here. And we have the center of gravity right in the middle. So how would we define the kinetic energy for this system. Well, it may be handy to use instantaneous centers in this situation. So remember the procedure for using instantaneous centers, we draw perpendicular lines from the velocities. And where those intersect is the instantaneous center of zero velocity. So at this point, we can assume everything's rotating about this point. So to get the kinetic energy term using this, we would use the kinetic energy is equal to one half I, this is the mass moment of inertia about the instantaneous center, times omega squared. 
So how do we get this I value? Well, the I value, remember we'll use the parallel axis theorem, I is equal to the moment of inertia about the center of gravity plus md squared. And if we consider this a slender rod, that is 1 12th ml squared plus md squared, where d is the distance from the center of gravity to the point we're rotating about. So this is d. So if we can find d. And the last step of this equation, once we found the mass moment of inertia about the instantaneous center, would to be find, finding omega. And the way we find omega, we know that omega times some distance r is equal to our velocity. Well, if we're given vb here, and let's say we're given va or vb, we can figure out any of these distances. So let's call this rb. We would know that omega then is equal to the velocity of b divided by this distance rb if we could find this rb using trigonometry and then once we have omega here we sub everything in and we can get the kinetic energy of an object rotating about its instantaneous center